liefde, één God van genade, één God van trouw. Het is allemaal in één. Dat de Hindoeïsme toch bepaalde afgoden hadden. En die werden, uh, ja, werd je opgedragen om deze te aanbidden. En het eigenlijk, ja, het, het, uh, wat de Bijbel ook zegt, jij zult geen uh, stenen uh, God aanbidden. En vandaar dacht ik, van, nee, het is niet goed. Many people complain. Hinduism is too complex, too complicated, too many of this, too many of that, too many gods. Of course, the first thing is they're not gods. They're called devas, which means they're like angels. So you actually would really never hear a Christian say, there are too many angels. We've got to get rid of them. Because too many angels is not a problem. Angels are simply divine helpers. So there's really not a lot of gods in Hinduism. There's a lot of angels. And when you see all those different deities and forms, those are just angelic beings or divine helpers who serve the Supreme. But there's no reason that the knowledge of India is any more difficult to understand at the beginning of the process than any other culture. The reason it's been presented as complicated and difficult is that it's been colonized by Christianity and Islam and modern science, all of whom have been prejudiced against it without understanding it. So the fact of the matter is that it's a propaganda that somehow the, the traditions of India are complicated. They've been made to appear complicated by people who don't like them. But they don't like them because they studied them. They don't like them because they're prejudiced against them. People like myself are a standing refutation of these arguments. Because we've come to the Hindu traditions from the very beginning, from the outside, with no information and no knowledge and no background, and we don't find it difficult. Om Sri Vishnu. There's a saying in the Hindu culture, there's only one enemy in life, and that's ignorance. If you're ignorant, ignorance is not bliss. And according to the Hindu culture and teaching, if you're ignorant, you'll behave in such a way that you cause harm to yourself and others. The more ignorant, the more harm. The less ignorance, the less harm. So this is why if somebody says, oh, Hinduism is too intelligent and philosophical, we as Hindus say, no, not really. It's just that life is complicated enough that to live it properly, you have to learn. You have to become educated, and you have to learn how to cooperate with the laws of nature. Christianity does have truth in it, of course, and each of the religions do. So that may be a grade level of learning for somebody, and they learn that for a while, and then they finish with that. And how do they know they're done? Well, probably they'll have questions that can't get answered. They'll ask the questions, and the people won't want to have the conversation. So then they'll say, well, I guess I'll have to go somewhere else to get the answers to my questions. Until those questions arise, the person's probably not choosing their religion by philosophy. They're probably choosing circumstantially. No. Het, het gemis wat ik had in het katholicisme, dat was dat het bij mij nooit zo diep ging. Ik ging naar de kerk en dan hoorde ik een preek en dan kwam ik thuis en dan was ik alles weer kwijt. Uh, vier jaar geleden, ik had best wel een moeilijke tijd. Mijn moeder was overleden en uh, dat vond ik best wel heel verdrietig. Toen ging ik naar de kerk, belde onze oude pastoor op en zei... Pastoor, ik zit toch wel iets ergens mee waar ik echt helemaal geen raad mee weet. Ik weet gewoon niet meer wat ik moet doen. En uh, kunt u mij helpen? En toen zei de pastoor tegen mij, ja, sorry Therese, maar daar kan ik je niet mee helpen hoor. Ga maar naar de kerk, je moet maar gaan bidden. Een Nepalese vriendin, die ook hindoe is, die gaf mij een boekje mee. Met de Bhagavad Gita. En ze zei, hier Therese, ga dat maar lezen. En dat was mijn eerste uh, stap in de richting naar het hindoeïsme. Uh, to, toen ik het katholicisme uh, beleed, was ik toch op de een of andere manier mijn zelfvertrouwen helemaal kwijt. Het zelfvertrouwen is bij mij teruggekomen doordat ik nu zeker weet dat God in mij zit en niet buiten. Maar wat zei zelf, je moet jezelf ook zelf ook zien als een goddelijk iemand. Want dan heb je ook minder neiging om van het pad af te dwalen, van het rechte pad af te dwalen. Als je zelf ook weet dat je goddelijke aard hebt, ga je ook geen slechte dingen meer doen. What we've actually been seeing is people have been leaving Christianity in large numbers in the West. 
And what you've seen over the last 50 years is an incredible growth. There's probably 100 million people in the world right now who either were Jews or Christians who are now practicing yoga. And are, it's not that they don't like Christianity. I don't think anyone doesn't like Jesus, who's a good person. Jesus seems like a very likable person. And his behavior was very nice. And so we all think highly of him and the people that follow him. So those of us who were born as Christians or Jews aren't against Moses or Jesus. But we just simply found all our questions were not answered. And there was a lack of interiority. There was a lack of deeper truth and wisdom. There was a lack of deeper history and roots. And there weren't specific answers to our questions. So the Western educated people tend to leave Christianity and Judaism when they don't get answers. Hinduism is just as necessary today as it's always been because it's the medicine for a planet that is competing instead of cooperating. And the Hindu view for thousands of years has been we're supposed to leave the planet as good or better than it was when we arrived so that future generations have the same beautiful place to grow and evolve. You can see that modern culture has abandoned these values and is now leaving an endangered planet with pollution, with waste, and many problems for future generations. So it's really the first time in history on a massive scale that we've left a dangerous, polluted, injured planet for our children. In het Vredespaleis in Den Haag komen naast koning Beatrix religieuze wereldleiders bijeen om een verdrag te ondertekenen waarin staat dat iedereen met respect dient om te gaan met elkaars religie. This declaration mentions a few important things. Mutual respect, acceptance of others as they are, without trying to change them. Swami Saraswati tekent namens de wereldwijde Hindu gemeenschap. Hij hoopt dat met het ondertekenen van dit verdrag het agressief bekeren tegengegaan zal worden. When you convert a person, you are telling that person your religion so far, what you have been following, is wrong. And he has to disown his parentage, he has to disown his culture, he has to disown his religion, his actors of worship, he is made into a fool. They think that it is, uh, that they are saving the souls. It's something like somebody is pulling the fish out of the pond and the owner comes and asks, hey, come on, what are you doing? I am saving the fish from drowning. <laughs> Mijn vader was zakenman en die ging nooit, maar dan ook nooit, zonder zijn Bhagavad Gita, de deur uit. Die zat altijd in zijn, in zijn attachékoffer, altijd. Dus mijn vader bad altijd, die las altijd de Bhagavad Gita. En omdat ik natuurlijk altijd het katholicisme heb beleid, heb ik, had ik nooit echt iets met de Bhagavad Gita meer. Totdat ik bij Sai Baba kwam en die heeft mij weer ertoe gezet om de Bhagavad Gita te gaan lezen. Het is, je moet zo diep gaan. Je moet zo diep gaan als je het hinduïsme beleidt om dingen, om dingen te begrijpen. Maar als ze eenmaal duidelijk worden, dan weet je het voor altijd. Het gaat steeds meer in je systeem zitten en je gaat ook steeds dieper. Uh, het voelt nu heel goed dat ik dus eigenlijk uh, datgene wat mijn, mijn vader uh, vroeger heeft... Uh, hij was natuurlijk een beleidend hindoe, om daar nu na 50 jaar zeg maar weer in, uh, naartoe terug te gaan. Dat voelt gewoon heel goed. Het past ook veel beter bij mijn spirituele pad. Ik, 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 ik weet nou waar ik sta. Ik weet nou wie, wie en wat ik ben. One of the greatest gifts of the Hindu teachings is that not only do we see every living entity as a spiritual being. So the first step is to be able to see them not as their body, not as their mind, but in a divine way. But then the same love that we're feeling in our relationship with the Supreme Being. The same love we feel for God 
carries over into the way we see every living being. So I want to love you as sweetly as I want to love that supreme being. The truth is that tears should come to our eyes, that we should feel the joy and ecstasy of divine love permeating everything. The same divine love that made flowers, that made all the creatures, that made everything beautiful. The same divine love that gives us the gift of life, the gratitude for that, the love of that, and the respect for one another that comes from that is the basis of the Hindu love of all living entities. Namaste. Omwani, het kwartaalblad van OHM. Wat verder gaat waar onze programma's ophouden. Word nu lid. Kijk op ohmnet.nl of bel tijdens kantooruren. 035 626 0920. OHM, informerend en inspirerend.